Are you an MCU stan or are you a new fan? Are you trying to figure out which of these movies? There's 23 movies. Do I have to watch all of them? Are all of them good? Which ones are trash? Well, you know what? I am about to let you know where it's at. Here we go. MCU tier list going live now. Let's get started where this beautiful journey was engendered, the original Iron Man. This movie has a very special place in my heart. I am I have been a big fanboy of Robert Downey Jr. since Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. The perfect way to start off this, this franchise, Iron Man, was great. I know there's some people that don't really like it because it was kind of a little bit iffy in terms of the actual plot. And I know that they didn't like uh, Obadiah Stane's Alter Ego. Some people don't like it, but this movie was great. The casting was great for Robert Downey Jr. He became the, uh, the top actor in the world. The pacing was good, in my opinion. The villain was kind of off, but this movie started everything. You know this is going straight into the S tier, homie. Second movie. I'm going to go... Oh my God, okay. This is a movie that everybody that sees it is either loving it or hating it. There's no in-betweens. We're, of course, talking about The Incredible Hulk. Edward Norton did the Lord's work in 2008. Uh, he brought the Hulk to life. Wh why am, what am I saying? Why am I saying? The Incredible Hulk is, is a bad movie. The best parts about this movie are Abomination, the villain, which was elite, and the actual re like rendering of, of the Hulk. I actually think this version of the Hulk is a lot more menacing than the one Mark Ruffalo plays in the MCU which is baffling to say out loud, but I don't think Edward Norton pulled uh, put all the strings to get there, in my opinion. I was left with a sour taste in my mouth. I wanted more. So you're going into the sea. Sea bin. Sea bin, my friend. Ooh, since we're doing character introductions, let's go to the main one. Captain America, the first Avenger. Now this one, this one is complicated because y'all know how much I love my fighting movies. And if you are aware, Hugo Weaving played the shit out of the Red Skull. That was probably one of the best movie villains the entire Marvel Universe had in terms of gravitas. I did like the CGI, I did like the battles, and obviously the introduction of Bucky Barnes is near to deal my soul. Sebastian Stan is my pastor and nothing can ever stop him. So I'm gonna just leave him in the B tier, just chilling in the B. It's, it's, it's B for very good. Some people might have their own opinions, but you know, this is my show. I'm running this shit, so. I'll let the chat pick this one. Which get, which movie should we pick? Next up, everybody, is the God of Thunder himself, Thor, Odin's son. What can I say about this movie? They basically took all of the nominees for the Oscars, for Supporting Actor, for Best Actor, for Legacy Actor, everything. Every award winner is in this movie. Natalie Portman, Idris Elba. Chris Hemsworth is the GOAT, I'm not gonna lie. And then you got Anthony Hopkins and Tom Hiddleston. What else can I say? I'm not going to give it the S tier because it did kind of play off of the Sh Shakespearean version of Thor. And we all know that's boring as hell. I didn't like the fact that it was a little bit slow, in my opinion, in the beginning. While they were trying to like humanize Thor. I get it. Hawkeye was introduced in this movie too. This movie's like an 8 out of 10. It gets, a D it gets the A tier because of the special place in my heart that it holds. I think we did most of the introductions except for... Let's go with that, man. Uh, Ant-Man... Ant-Man is tough. The thing with Ant-Man is the star-studded cast only gets you so far. What, what really makes this movie shine, in my opinion, is the humor. Paul Rudd is undefeated, bro. First of all, Paul Rudd is a damn vampire. Whoever, whoever says the contrary is in on the joke or they're, or they're part of the Illuminati. To be honest, this was forgettable. The actual plot was forgettable. The villain was... The, the, the What is it? The Hornet? The Yellow Hornet or whatever it is? Like, nah, bro. You kind of sucked. Uh, but I think Paul Rudd carries this movie al along with the side characters to the degree that it merits being on the B tier. It merits being on the B tier. Now that we did that introduction, oh baby, I saw it, I saw it. Guardians of the Galaxy, possibly the best soundtrack on a Marvel movie to date. Oh my God, was this movie good. You took my favorite wrestler from the 2000s, which is Batista, I was, I was obsessed with WWE, for those of you that don't know. I was wearing the DX sweatshirts uh, and doing, like, every single Christmas, every single recess. I was obsessed with WWE, so when I saw Batista, I was sold, homie. But Chris Pratt carries this movie with Zoe Zaldana to such an extent that it automatically deserves a top-tier performance. This is, without a shadow of a doubt, 
S tier, long live baby Groot. Now that we did that one, we got to go to the other big introduction, Spider-Man Far From Home. And you know what? What, what, what can be said about this movie besides spectacular, superb, sensational? This is going straight into the S tier, but I will explain why. You finally took Iron Man and made him a mentor, which is exactly what I need. It is exactly what I needed. You also took Michael Keaton, who is very well experienced in being a superhero with Batman, and turned him into a villain. And a memorable one at that. The soundtrack was great. The plot was great. Tom Holland is easily one of my favorite Spider-Men. Probably one or two, because sorry, Andrew Garfield, you're a great Spider-Man, not a great Peter Parker. I'm putting this one spectacularly in the S tier. How many introductions do we have left? Uh, we had we we did Spider Man, we did Iron Man, we did Thor, we did all. We're missing one. No, we're missing a few. Oh, Doctor Strange is probably one of my favorite movies. Period. This movie had everything. Tilda Swinton was a great villain slash hero mentor, whatever you could say. But honestly, Benedict Cumberbatch carries this movie like nobody has carried anything before. Both his franchise and the gravitas of the multiverse moving on into the future he's basically doing what lebron james did to the eastern conference while he was in miami benedict cumberbatch can do no wrong dr strange can do no wrong top tier cgi top tier music top tier sound design it is s tier uh next up black panther thank you thank you disney a socially conscious and extremely badass movie cast trailblazers in the mcu this movie was off the chain michael b jordan cemented his place as one of the best movie villains ever some of the greatest motivations in the entire mcu and superhero movies in general the castings were amazing lupita nyongo absolutely destroyed it okoye was amazing black panther was everything i could want in an introduction movie and more i saw it five times I saw it five times in the movie theater. Disney stole over $70 of my hard-earned money to watch this movie. Sensational. Straight into the S tier. Damn it. We gotta get into this. We gotta get into this discussion. I'm gonna rip off the band-aid. Captain Marvel. What can I say about this? Well, there's a few positives. I'll go with the positives first. I really like the CGI. Uh, I actually really liked Samuel Jackson's uh, age degrading, which was pretty dope. The way that they actually did that by making it look like it was Samuel Jackson in the 90s was insane. I actually really like Brie Larson. She has the charisma, she has the humor, she has the gravitas, and she has the badassery to carry both her franchise and the female presence in the MCU. But this script was so horrible. She didn't know what she was happening half the time. And when she got her powers, it didn't feel like she actually wanted to be there. And Jude Law... You missed the mark, homie. Your greatest Dumble, your greatest Dumbledore. But I'm never watching this movie again. I I could live without watching this movie again. And speaking of movies that I would never watch again, Ant Man and the Wasp. What even was this movie? What purpose did this movie serve? Somebody tell me. What what did we gain about watching Ant Man and the Wasp besides a nice little quip at the end and the setup to Avengers Endgame? I cannot justify this movie's existence, and that is why it is going in the never again tier list. Never again. I don't want to see it again. I don't need it. I don't want it. Now that we've covered the twash, let's get into the good stuff. Uh, the sequels that either made or break a franchise. Iron Man 2. Great soundtrack. Love the War Machine. Introduced Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle is a king. A Don. Amazing. And Black Widow was sensational. But honestly, I didn't really like the villain. They gave it to Mickey Rourke, which Mickey Rourke is an amazing actor. We all know Mickey Rourke is an amazing actor, but I think you all missed the mark here. You could have had a great experience showing the, the, the duality between Tony Stark and uh, a villain that knows exactly what he's capable of. I'm taking into it in the C tier. C for could be better, homie. Another C. Ooh. Ooh. This movie right here, bros. This movie right here, people, is why we can have good things and enjoy them. Captain America the Winter Soldier. I cried at this movie. When Captain America faced Bucky in that final scene, tears were coming out of my eyes like waterworks. You could have called me Squirtle. This movie was absolutely perfect. 
it set up Captain America as more than just a hero. He is flawed. He has problems. Everything was good about this movie. Nobody can tell me different. I would put it in S tier, but it didn't get to that like, yo, I have to see this multiple times again. I, I absolutely loved it. It's going into the A tier. That's as much as I'll say. Oh my God. Going from good to the bad and the ugly. Thor, the dark world. Why? Why did we produce this violation of human rights? This S tier abomination needs to go straight into the never again category. I don't need to explain anything further than the dark elves. Why? Send it home. Go home and bring me Natalie Portman in Love and Thunder. That is all I have to say. What do we have left? Ooh. Ooh. One of the more mature movies in the MCU. Iron Man 3 is a sleeper. And why? Because it showed the depth of Tony Stark. Deeply flawed as both a human being and a hero. While it didn't touch the topic of alcoholism super bad as it does in the comics, they did touch the topic of PTSD and anxiety to such a degree that this movie immediately gets to the B tier. I, I'm not going to put it in the A or S tier. Why? Because the villain sucked. You're telling me that you brought Ben Kingsley into this movie and you made the villain a hoax? It's automatically B tier. I, I don't have to say anything else. We are reaching the good part of this. The original, the sauce. There's a difference between having the juice and acquiring the sauce. This movie has the barbecue, the ranch, the whatever the hell you want. It has all of the sauce. The original Avengers movie was goaded, elite in every sense of the word. The pacing, great. The sound, great. The characters, great. The chemistry, great. Everything. If I could have an S++ tier, I would put it there. The original Avengers is officially S tier. This is a movie that is kind of a problem for me. Because I am really excited for the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, but I didn't really like the second one as much. How do I explain this? It was like a sequel that couldn't quite hold up to its predecessor. The, the audio was great, don't get me wrong. The music choices were downright pristine for this. And I love the fact that they talked about Ego and what his motivations were, because we know Ego the Living Planet is kind of like a, a badass. But I was really surprised by the way they handled Yondu. Yondu was handled like a king here and given the true mantle of a father figure that Star-Lord needed. Just because of that, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a B. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it on the B tier, but it could have been a C. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about what y'all have to say about Age of Ultron, because originally I was very skeptical about where I was going to put Age of Ultron. I would usually put it in the C or B tier, but after watching WandaVision, I understand the impact that this movie had. This movie showed us that the superheroes cannot be led into battle without any sort of accountability and then WandaVision came out when WandaVision came out I understood what the Avengers had to do in order to bring actual justice into the system that's why it's gonna go into the A tier that's the biggest jump that's the biggest jump I've ever given a movie from C to A that's the biggest jump that I've ever given a movie at least in the MCU sweet baby Jesus take me home what a masterpiece civil war not only, not only did you make me doubt my alliance to Captain America and Tony Stark, you also made me choose of who I wanted to win because honestly, I was rooting for Black Panther of the, the entire movie, but I was also rooting for Spider-Man. I also rooted for Tony. I liked both sides of the aisle. I loved both arguments, but Tony Stark was wrong. You were trusting the government to handle superhero business. That's a no-go, homie. That's a no-go, homie. The actual winner of this movie was captain america and all his peeps is it s tier though for sure yep it is it is i i, I won't even second guess it i won't even second guess it Th that movie was pristine it should be put in a museum the louvre needs to set up an exhibit just for the avengers and civil war is right in the middle of it we got four movies left we got four movies left people i am gonna be very honest with you I really like the way that they handled Spider-Man in this movie, but the way that they handled Mysterio was kind of trash, in my opinion. I didn't like that. Jake Gyllenhaal did a great job of playing Mysterio and giving him that mystery, for lack of a better word, and teasing the multiverse, but it felt kind of flat for me. 
I really like the visuals. I really like the the noir suit. I loved the fact that uh, he had to deal with the consequences of Spider Man Spider Man being just in the shadow of Iron Man and needing to overcome it. But it is not S tier. Is it A or B? Is it A or B? That's the that's the real question. I don't know. I think it is a bit better than Iron Man three, and by def by, by by process of elimination, it could be A. But, but, do I think it had the impact that the other movies had? Yes. A tier. I don't even have to lie to you. You know what's about to happen. Thor Ragnarok is one of the best superhero movies ever put into the cinema. The music was great. Having Thor battle the Hulk. Oh, sheesh. Take my money, Disney. I don't know how much I have to pay, but I would pay... A lot of money to see this movie for the first time again. This movie goes straight into the S tier bottom line. I know some people are going to be mad about it, but Thor deserves that spot. Avengers Infinity War. I think this is probably the best movie going experience I have ever had. And y'all know I'm a weeb for Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars weeb slash fan slash uh, shill. But I love Avengers Infinity War more than I love my dogs. That's how much, that's how much I love this movie. If I could turn back time to before the pandemic, it'd be to either Avengers Infinity War or Endgame. One of those two. Wow. Straight into the S tier. Enough said. And talking about the S tier, talking about spectacular, sensational, trailblazing, eyebrow raising, magic making, filmmaking, Avengers Endgame. What can be said about this movie that hasn't been covered already? The cast was handled perfectly. You had over 20 A-list actors. This movie was perfect. Absolutely perfect. It was a little bit too long. Just a tad bit too long. Like 10 minutes too long. But it covered everything that I needed to say. It gave us the best conclusion to a superhero arc with Iron Man and with Captain America. Both at the same time completing their purpose. And it showed us the best movie battle in a superhero film besides the dark knight or something from fox like logan i love this movie and with that we end the tier list with an amazing s tier ranking there you go youtube my mcu tier list all 23 movies ranked from the s tier the spectacular sensational scenes to the never again trash that i would never see again because it deserves to go to the shadow realm directly without any sort of of peer reviewed decision thank you guys so much for coming to my channel remember to like comment and subscribe i'll be doing more tier lists here if you're on the tiktok make sure to click that bio link and come to my youtube i'm streaming every tuesday thursday and saturday around 8 p.m eastern if there's a change to that schedule you can check out my discord or my instagram or my twitter that's where i'll be putting all the alerts so you know exactly when i go live and speaking about knowing exactly when i am live make sure to hit that notification bell icon so you can get instant notification on your phone on your tablet on your computer whatever you watch youtube for when your boy is going live thank you so much and see you on the next one oh